and, and um, you know, his idea of this flat earth already has problems um, or questions. Are, are, we, are we talking about the same guy that came in here one day and uh, was claiming that Jaren is, is some type of a show because he's using the AE map and CGI ranting guy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was saying Ranty was making fake images. We're talking about that guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a dick. I think he just wants popularity. It's nothing to do with um, truth or anything like that, you know. Well, look, at his, um, look on his channel and see how many subs the Wait Souls has got. I think he's got something like 16,000 subs or something like that, right? Mm. And his videos get about 200 views. Mm. He's admitted on he's the saying, show... He, He's yeah, he it bought on the show views, that he bought right? No, I know it's fake. I know he bought his views, but I'm I'm just trying to look at what he's trying to do by calling out Nathan. You know, obviously Nathan has a show that's you know fucking or whatever. He's, he's destroying, destroying the competition. Yeah. Everyone, so all, the, all these morons call out Nathan every day, and they're still here in the chat every day. You know, it's like, what the hell are you guys doing? Why are you calling somebody out? Like, you're still following the show. Because, letting, because Nathan lets me on. So they have no choice. <laughs> I mean, because Nathan lets you on. Yeah. Oh, they're all your fans. Right, I get it. No, they're all threatened. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, all... Because my model is correct and I'm going to turn out to be correct. Are we live again? No. Nope. No. Oh, I wish I wouldn't yeah. say something like that. We're not live, but this bit is being recorded. Eventually, it'll end up being uh, on the recorded version that he puts on his um, backup channel. Ah, okay. That's no, but seriously, Awake Souls, the guy is a psychopathic freak. He really, really is. And uh, I would not be surprised if in his dreams, he actually goes to the dark world by default. And Lucifer, there in the form of an angel, tells him to destroy all his enemies, which is all flat earthers. And then he is promised to be the victorious. You're not speaking yeah. from experience here, are you, Owen? Are we? No, I'm just pretty sure that that's the case. Spurs, did you hear? Did you hear the beginning know. of the show? No, no, I just literally come in the house and then I just joined. You know, sheep's and neeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's got this water argument at the minute that it's not made of hydrogen and oxygen. No, I've just saw the... T I didn't watch the video, no. What, okay, what's, the, what's happened? Right, well, he's, he's got this argument that water's not made of hydrogen or oxygen. Um, and basically, it's a silly claim because he's, he's a flat earther claiming that basically what everybody accepts is true. Water is taken to oxygen. <coughs> questioning it. Now, what? it makes us look stupid if he's wrong. So I've I've pushed it and said, can somebody go and deal with, deal with this? And he's, he's getting the traction that he needs now to deal with it. But what's happened is he's um, got the traction from a high school teacher that's uh, got a physics um, degree or whatever. And he's basically telling him he's wrong. And rather than coming out with the evidence to prove that he's right, he wants to fight him. <laughs> well, tell me, I have a question. Is this originally Peter and Pete idea or was it Chips yeah. and Pete's? No, I think it was Peter and Pete's. But I only found out about these after I found out about the sheep's comment. I didn't know about Peter and Pete ah, until... Okay. Yeah, because I seen a few weeks ago, I seen the water doesn't... Uh, with the electricity, you know, for the first argument. And then they talk about water not being actually the two elements. Well, I think um, he's, he's going to get his answer one way or another, and I hope he does that. What does that, does that agree with it? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think it's from Dal. I don't think Dal's got anything to do with it, oh. and I don't, I don't know his view on it. Um, but I just do know that he's got support from this Dave and Dave channel or whatever it is, Pete and Peter. But what's he saying about water? What's what? He's saying that it's got it's it's an element in its own right. It's not a compound. And what, what does it mean? Molecule. It just means that the whole of science will be wrong. Well, science is... Oh, yeah, because they were complaining about chemistry being wrong as well. Well, he, that's what he's arguing, yeah. And, I, I mean, <laughs> most of us take the, the look at it on the surface and realise that this doesn't sound like a good, strong argument, but he's, st he's doubled down on it this morning, saying that it definitely is an element. And, I mean, I don't care whether he's right or wrong. I just want to de deal with it pretty quick, because he's, if he's wrong, he's making us look stupid. It's going to end up being like one of those... How can you, how can you isolate one oxygen? Because if water is 
one hydrogen and two ox two oxygen two oxygens. How how can how can you measure that? I mean, if it's possible. Hello, not my bag. I'm not getting involved in the arguments for and against it. I'm just raising the awareness so that it can be dealt with quickly. So that if it is wrong, then it can be you can back away from it quickly and quietly, and let, just hope people forget about it. What are these guys' happen. credentials then? Well, he's a he's a high school. He's got a master's degree in, in biology. He's got I think he's got a degree in one of the sciences. I don't probably maybe biology, but it might be chemistry. I don't know. But he teaches chemistry now. Oh no, he teaches physics. I think I'm not sure. He's, he's, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what where he's at, and I don't want to get this wrong, so just say I don't know, but I do know that he's got a master's degree in something, so he's, he's, he's high enough up there to have, an, have some, know something about it. But his argument is basically saying that the whole body of chemistry or whatever it is, is wrong for the past eons of years. No, his argument is that it's a compound. It's, yeah. a, it's an element, not a compound, so it's like it's not made of hydrogen and oxygen. It's, it's its own individual compound, right? Its own element. Um, and its reason for it is that you have to add electrolyte solution to it to make it conductive, which means that it's an element. But you actually add the conductivity, the, the, the electrolyte solution to allow it to electrolyze. But the, the electrolyte solution is still there afterwards. Um, but he doesn't accept that. He thinks that that means that it's um, a, a, an element in its own right and it should be on the periodic table as a, its own element. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by, let's get it right, Spurs Chemo, Sleeping Warrior, Mark Doxy, Jose, Jimmy, Dan, Chocolate Saiyan and Arwin. Good to have you all. Good afternoon. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Puerto Rico. R. You. So, can I? We managed it last time. Let's see if I can do it this time with a few more people on the uh, panel. Any signs of curvature? Anybody on the panel currently got any evidence for curve? No. I do, but you won't listen, so. I'll listen. How are you yeah, doing, Nami? Hello. Hey Nami, good to have you. Hey, how's it going, guys? Long, Long time, time no time. Hi Nami. What's up, Nami? We've, we may have a turn of events. Who's got some evidence of curvature? I think it was Jimmy. Jimmy, excellent. Yeah, but it's been we've gone down this route before, and you guys don't want to listen to the evidence, and you eventually end up muting people and getting angry about it. So. I, I I would suggest Jimmy. Uh, let, Jimmy, yeah. let me let me hear uh, your uh, yeah, cited I, proof or evidence for curvature, please. Yeah, I want to hear it. My scientific evidence of curvature. Yes, please, please, if you don't mind. What other shape could have a north and south pole? I don't know. Or could a flat plane have a north and south pole? I don't know. There is a north and south pole, Jimmy. Well, there is. Right. You guys choose to ignore it, but that's that's your own thing. Okay, so how can I verify what you're talking about? Through the um, centuries and centuries and thousands of years of the, uh, oh. the scientific discovery and observations, and if you went to Australia, South Africa, South America, you would all see the same South Pole, and you can't see that from the Northern Hemisphere, and if you were 
in the northern hemisphere, you'll see the North Pole, and you can't see that from the southern hemisphere. Okay. So you still haven't spoken of or given any uh, scientific, you just said you don't want to believe. Don't need to, don't need to. There's observations right there. I and mean, the only shape that could, could provide a North and South Pole is a globe. You're talking about the layout of the Earth. Yeah, but Jimmy, how... how of curvature. Yeah, but Jimmy, let's say we go with what you're saying. How do we prove it to the panel, to the listeners, to people around the world? How do we prove, verify what you're saying? Go there. So that's the. So you're saying that's the only way to verify what you're saying. Have, have you been there? Things that you can see. Hold on a second. Can I, can I just interject? Sorry, one second. Hold on, hold on, guys. Can I just ask a question? I just need to get clarity from Jimmy. So... Where precisely are we going? Anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere and anywhere in the oh, Northern see, Hemisphere. Oh, see, the problem with that is that so you're automatically... you guys here in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see the North Pole. Okay. If you go go to Australia, for example, South uh, Africa... I heard your you example. I heard your example. Thank you. Yep. So, no do you understand that the word hemisphere means mm -hmm. that you are already under the assumption that you are travelling to this place on a sphere? Do you understand that? Mm, that's not an assumption. That's the word hemisphere is associated with half of a sphere. So when you tell me to go to the northern hemisphere, you are telling me to travel on your ball that you presuppose. Do you understand that? See, this is the route that you go down, Nathan. I, I don't think... Oh, no, stop there, stop, 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 stop. Because me and the other guy, I forgot his name, sorry, forgive me, but we were asking you originally for scientific yeah. proof, and you've sent us uh, to a, a destination. So so let's not try to get too, you know, hyper. Stay calm, Jimmy. Just well, provide scientific proof. This well, is Jimmy. all about the layout. This is yeah, not but about Jimmy, just, just provide scientific. You, you can either say, I don't have it, or these people have it. So just yeah, where can I, you I do it? have it myself. I've been to both the northern hemisphere mm -hmm. and the southern hemisphere okay can i, mean, I try can i try it spurs jimmy, can i try it again jimmy, jimmy hold on jimmy, spurs. hold on hold on spurs let me just try it one more time with him because he's basically ignored what i've said so i'll try and remain calm and patient with this guy thank right. you nathan no problem right so when you traveled in yeah. your mind yeah when you traveled in your mind you were traveling to the northern hemisphere so when you went to check what you claim proves this you were already on a sphere when you looked at the stars do you understand that i grasp your concept okay it's called a presupposition well would you not say would you not say it's a fact that once you get past a certain point of the equator you cannot see the northern uh, star or pole star yeah thank you and would you For say what? that would work the same way looking down to the south in the northern hemisphere? Yeah. Sorry, you're doing it again. I'll try one more time. As soon as you say the word hemisphere, you are telling us that we are making this observation on a ball. You, when you made this journey and looked at the stars, already knew you were on a ball because you presupposed it. You travelled on a sphere to get there. That's called a okay. Piece of no, hold on. I get no, that. He's I get trying it. to compare the globe of hold the on, so. look, Hold on, whoa, whoa. I get that because look, we have to kind of understand Jimmy's point of view. It would make sense to Jimmy that if there were a North and South Pole, uh, he would expect there to be a sphere. But that's not what we're asking, Jimmy. We're asking you for scientific proof. This, you know, you can tell us a story about well, there's this, there's that, there's that, and the other. I'm not telling you a story. I'm well, telling you a fact. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a fact to you. No, it's a fact to everyone. Everyone in the world, it's a fact. Okay. That's why? Because, it's, because right. it's an intact question. Okay, ho hold on, guys. Let's just try this. Okay, mm -hmm. if it's a fact to you, even though you have no scientific evidence for it, then why are you here? Just go in peace and trust in R. Great. Off well, you go. Right. You're trying well, to I'm just tell us... Help you guys. What, by just telling us that it is that way? That's not very mm. scientific. You asked me a question, I gave you an answer. You know, you don't, you told me a presuppositional argument. That's called a logical fallacy. Now, it's clear that you don't understand what a logical fallacy is because you've then done it twice more times. You've done it again, which makes me clear in my understanding that you don't understand what a presupposition is because you keep doing right, it. Right, that's what. 
And that's what we have to teach it, right? Because to me and you, Nathan, in the beginning, it made sense that if there was a north and a south, there would be curvature. But that's just if if there were. So Jimmy's saying there is. But saying, so of course, it makes sense to Jimmy. This is, this is why we shouldn't really, you know, jump down his throat, because to him, in his world, there's a north, there's a south. And this is what we do. We break down the globe. We're going to show uh, to Jimmy scientifically uh, that there's no curvature. Uh, there cannot be a globe. And that all he has is a belief, a fantasy, presupposition, as you said. But at this moment, Jimmy doesn't see that because he, to, to him, it makes sense that there's a south and there's a north. Yeah. Look, uh, we but were asking for proof of curvature, and all he's provided is a deduction based on a presupposition. Right. Right. It has to be curved because of the globe of the stars. And I gave you proof. These things that are sorry, to Jimmy. Well, hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, Owen. Owen, just one second. Curvature. Sorry. Jimmy, what you've just done is we're, we're dissecting your pathetic excuse for proof and you've interrupted and told the audience that you've already given us proof. What we are doing is dissecting it in front of a live audience. Your fine, proof is... Fine. Yeah, but so you're, you're, sh you're claiming that that's the only... Hold on, Owen, I haven't quite finished. So, Jimmy, while we take to pieces your pathetic excuse for proof of Earth, you is can there? be quiet. There is no need for you to interrupt while we dis dissect your pathetic little proof. Okay? Don't interrupt. Okay, I was just going to say that your claim that that's the, on the only possible explanation for there being these polar stars, apparently, or these polar rotation points, is a sphere model of the Earth. Now, that's on you to prove that, right? You're saying that that's the only possible explanation for what we're observing. Well, now you have to prove that that's the only possible explanation for what we're observing. Go ahead. What do you mean? I have to prove it. It's there if you go and look. Well, that's one possible explanation, and there and there's lots of contradictions to that explanation that can be observed. But you're you're claiming that that's the only possible explanation okay. possible in all conceivable worlds yeah, it's not. for what we're observing. Now you have to prove that. That's not just the fact that you that makes sense to you doesn't prove that. There's no other possible explanation whatsoever. Okay, can someone bring up a flat Earth map for me? And I don't mean that as in where's your map kind of thing. If someone can well, just pick any map. Hold on, there is no They're flat Earth flat. maps. What? Well, any any flat Earth map or anything. Listen, that listen to what I just said. Maps are listen, flat. Hold on, I don't mean that as a negative hold on. I mean just just listen to my statement. There are no flat Earth maps. Okay, 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 okay. I'll, 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 I'll propose one then. Is I'm holding a, a mug of uh, tea in my hands at the moment, okay? And I can see the circular top of the, the cup of mug of tea, okay? I look into the middle, and that's what you, most of you guys class as the North Pole, and above that is the North Star. Then if you imagine going towards the outside of the mug rim, you have South Africa, South America, and Australia. Yeah, is everyone down with that? No, I've got absolutely no idea. Yourself, yourself. No, I, no. I, I want to ask you a question. Please do. Where, where is the southern rotation point? Where is it? Hmm. What do you mean? Where is it? How do I find it? Go to the sorry, Nathan, southern hemisphere. Right. Look south. South, right. So if I went in the, in the southern hemisphere and looked south. Let's say I was in Argentina, south coast of Argentina, near the Falkland Islands, okay. and I look south. Yeah. Are you are you asserting that it would also be south in Africa and south in Australia? Exactly. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. So why is there something called declination in Australia that is somewhere between eleven and fourteen degrees? It doesn't that's like because stuff. of the magnetics. Again, wait, 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 I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Okay. Declination is a thing in Australia, and what that does is it makes an adjustment to what your compass tells you is south, and it tells you that south is somewhere between 11 and 14 degrees, not south. So what I want to know is, have you considered what south is in the terms of an Australian observer? I'm considering it in terms of where the south pole star is. When you look into the sky, the well, that, that, that would be no then. When you're in Australia... South that would America, be no South then. America, that would be no. You all see the same star. And on a flat yeah, map, on, on, which you don't go along with, fair enough. 
and a flat earth map looking south would be looking in different directions from right this. so can you prove that you have to look south in australia because i'd like to know what is south is it south as the compass tells you or is it south that's been adjusted for declination is south as in the, where the star is simple no because yeah. you don't know that that's south no, we're it. talking about magnetic declination. He's talking about the celestial side. Hold, hold on, right, hold, 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 hold on, south. guys, guys. Before it descends into chaos, Arwin, just let it be one at a time. Yeah, let me finish my point, Arwin, if it's okay. Otherwise, you can hijack it and deal deal with it yourself if you'd like. But you're misinterpreting what he's saying. He says no, the I'm celestial south. Oh, you're bringing up the magnetic south. He's not. I'm not. He says the no, celestial that's quite a good south. point, though. The thing is, he has a good point, Arwin. The point I'm asking is, how does he know it's south? Doesn't matter. Yes, it does, because your claim is that it's same it's point. Proof. Guy, it doesn't matter about declination. It doesn't matter about magnetic. Of course, it does, because I'm asking. It's opposite north, is it not, on your model? I'd say so. Yeah, I'm not the. Right. Uh, the how uh, can you ascertain your direction of observation? Compass. Yeah, it does. It, it matters a lot. At all, because you're looking at the same point, whether you're in matter. Australia, I South Africa, South looking. America. I agree that you're looking at what you would interpret as the opposite point. You're looking I'm at the same you, star. You're looking at the same star, if you if you will. I'm asking you how you know it's opposite the other point. That wasn't the original question. All right, let me rephrase it. I'm asking you how you know it's south. Again, I've answered that question. Hold on. Your original assertion was that we go north, assume we're on a ball, and we're travelling onto the northern hemisphere of that ball, and then we look at the stars. Then we go to south of that ball that you presuppose and look at the stars now you're saying that it doesn't matter that if we look south we can just look at the stars so basically what you're saying is travel on an arbitrary ball to a position in the south and just look at some stars don't look at any compasses don't do anything just look at them and then decide Let's that that's south one star and on can i finish it. can i finish so oh. you just travel on a ball you've decided you are on and just look at the stars and decide they are south. That's what you're saying. No. No, not what I'm saying. I'm saying look at one star in the north and one star in the south. Right, and I'm asking you how you know. As the poles I'm asking you how you know you're looking south. I said it doesn't matter, Anthony. It does because you can't tell where north is unless you have a compass, right? No. I'm you're looking at north. In Australia, you need a compass to know where north is. No. Yes, Arwen, shut up, will you? No, it's not true. Why are you telling him to shut up, Anthony? That's not very nice. He was making a point. <sighs> okay, so how do you know where north is if you're in Australia, Arwen? Very simple. It is the technical opposite side of the South Southern Cross. Celestial-wise, you take the longest route from the Celestial Cross, that point, towards the south, or towards the opposite side of the star heavens. But how do you know that? If you can't see the northern star at the same time, how do you know that it lines up? That's the point that I am. Because the northern half of the globe of the heavens rotates consistently with the same constellations in their place. And part of them will still be visible even if the northern star is no longer visible and the southern cross becomes visible. So the globe of the heavens is a very detailed, well-defined and fixed set of stars well said. all throughout. It seems like you've completely hijacked Anthony's point, though. Yeah, so, I did, because it didn't make any sense. What? No, it doesn't. You, <laughs> it, that makes total sense, because it's like you've got this circularity of these definitions in terms of orientation. If that was the case, then why would they need compasses? Why would people have ever need, required a compass for uh, navigation purposes? Because during the daytime, the stars are invisible. <laughs> you I don't think, think about that one again, Gatekeeper. Huh? I think you should think about that again before you ask that question, because I think Arwen answered it quite succinctly. No, it's not true. I mean, you oh, can really? look if you look up the, the history of navigation, you think that they only use the compass in the daytime? No, they don't. No, but you said, why didn't, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, no, that's what I said, and then you responded by saying that, or he responded by saying that because they, uh, they, they couldn't see the stars in the daytime, so that is the uh, point. But you know what? I wanted to go back to the fact that you claim that that, is, that the globe is the only possible explanation for what we observe, right? Maybe, that's, maybe your diamond, then. that's your claim. Your claim is that 
the only possible explanation for well, what we're the only one. The only one that really works when works within the predefined uh, understanding. So you're claiming that you're asserting that as proof, which means that if and only if it's a globe, will we make the observations that we're will we be a, be a diamond if you want to get technical about it, but yeah. yeah. And I can explain yeah, exactly why that. you want. It's because you, you are proposing that the globe of the heavens. My, geez, man, you're really obnoxious. Anyways, the uh, who's talking? Oh, and you, no, what you're doing is you're hijacking everybody's point. Can you just yeah, right? If you want to, if you want to start a new point when they're finished, great. And then they'll hopefully let you get to your point, which you'll moan if anybody interrupts you about. But it's or now we're just going to move on to another subject, and I won't. Get but they've brought this subject up. It's his proof. It's his assertion, and they're challenging it. And then you're challenging them. Before it's, they get it's not an assertion. assertion. It's actually fact. It really is. Fact. No, I was going to actually challenge him properly. Right, but Nummy's in the middle of challenging him. All right, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that it what what it's incumbent on you now to prove that that's the only possible model that could explain the observations because that's your claim. You're saying, oh, I have proof that it's a globe. I was in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, that's that's what. Okay, so prove it. Prove that that's the only possible model. No, you asked me for proof, and I gave you proof for, for proof. Okay, well, you have to prove. You're not saying you've got to prove that's the only one. proof. You have to explain that that's the only possible explanation for what we're observing now. Now, that's what you. The need only to shape prove. that would work. What? It's the only shape that would work in that in this environment. Okay, prove that, please. Just look at shapes. Think about shapes. Yeah, I'm thinking about you. Either. You're not me a thinking. A plane can't do it. A diamond can't really do it. No, me Red thinking about shapes is Sweat not you proving. It. Me, thinking about, me thinking about shapes is not you proving that that's the only possible right. shape that would you explain. Look at different shapes, and I've gone through the shapes and said none of them would work. So what else do you want to yeah, say? But you're not. You have to prove that. How is that sure. proof, man? Can I why do I have to prove about what shape is? You said it's proof. Because you're the one that's coming here and telling us that we're wrong. So no, you why don't you prove what you're saying? Okay. Oh. Every shape that I've just mentioned, this would not work on any other shape apart from a globe. Yeah, it would. Prove it, please. Prove it. What do you mean, prove it? Prove it. You're saying that's that you something you're just saying, man. You're just saying it. You're just asserting that that proves it, but you have to make a lot Okay, okay. Um, on a square, uh, you could have a north and south pole, but you would fall off the sides of the, uh, the square as you went over on the boat. No. Nope. The triangle, you'd have one point at the top and a base at the bottom, and that would work for the north and south pole, but you're talking about something that's going up really high and then going back down again. I'm going to carry no. on. It's not true. It's only based on a presupposition. That was the argument I was going to make, and that is it can be the only shape if you propose that the globe of the heavens and all the stars and the heavenly bodies are in a fixed literal position and the earth is folded into a ball underneath it. So you have to presuppose that they are physical objects in a fixed position. And then if you presuppose that, yeah, then you can only draw the conclusion based on that presupposition that you're on a ball. Okay, I don't um, have any what, proof what, what, that they are what, in any fixed physical literal positions at all. Yeah, but let him make the argument. I don't think he understands the argument. I do understand the argument. I'm going to argument. try to make this argument because you're, you're claiming that you have absolute rock solid proof, and then you're just saying, well, it's not a square, so it must be a globe. But no, you actually, you actually have to defend what you're asserting. Well, I've, I've backed it with proof. What yeah. proof? Okay, I'm waiting for the by proof. Saying, by saying you could just be in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? You can be in the northern hemisphere and you will not be able to see the southern pole star. Look, this and guy's a dumbass. I'm sick of hearing this. He doesn't understand how stupid he is. He's had a presupposition explained to him. He just keeps reasserting the presupposition like he's got proof. This guy's thick. I mean, you know, it, there's only so far you can go. Dunning-Kruger, he thinks he's done really well. Well done. Go in peace, my son. In R we trust. Radio Sanctus. Yeah, Jimmy, you do, sound, uh, you do sound like a bit of a buffoon. I mean, really? You, well, right, I mean. Yeah, well, this is the problem, Jimmy. I mean, why people are raging at Globus is simply because of what you're doing right now. You're just saying, well, it's there. It's, I've been there. And we're asking you to prove. No, I'm not. I've given you a fact that you can't yes. see either pole star in the opposite hemisphere. You cannot see it. It is impossible. 
possible Spurs. to see. Let yeah, me we try don't Spurs. Oh, Hold on, no me, Spurs. Let me just try one more time. I'll try it for the fourth time. Let's see if you can listen and not interrupt me. Excellent. When you. you say the word hemisphere, so you are telling us to go to the northern hemisphere. You are telling us to travel on a presupposed ball. Oh. Hold on. So before we've proven anything, we are already traveling on a sphere. Before we've measured a thing, before we've looked at anything, you already have us on a ball. That is known as a logical fallacy. It's called a presupposition. Now, I've explained this to you four times and asked if you have okay. understood it, and you keep doing it. Okay. If I'm at the equator, yeah? What shape are, is the, the equator around? I'm just saying. If I'm at the equator... The equator's not a physical thing. Sorry. Direct, I've got to stop I you. I tried to lead you. You, you haven't understood. The equator's I have, just... I really haven't. No, you haven't. Me, you haven't explained it yet. I've tried to interrupt you. This is where I start getting annoyed with people like you. Why because you've made you an assertion. We're at the equator. The equator is a concept. It's not a physical <laughs> thing. Do you understand that? Yeah, but people recognise Right, the so that concept has been derived from something. Do you understand what it's been derived from? Or are you just going to tell me that your ball equator is what it is and we've got to accept it because it's fact and proof? What was the equator okay. derived from? That's my question. Soon you will start getting insults from me. Well, that's not very nice, Nathan. I'm being yeah, very I'm cordial. asking you a question. Depending on your answer will depend on my insult to you. Or lack thereof, if you give a good why, answer. Why does it have to be like that, Nathan? Do why you understand the question? I haven't insulted you yet. Do you understand my question? We have called me pathetic, but I'll, I'll let them online. But what was my um, question? Did you hear my question? I think it did. Try and repeat it back to me. Uh, what did you say about the equator and where it's derived from? Anyway. How do you explain? Don't ask me a question. Why? You've just repeated my question back to me, dumbass. Now I want an answer. Your question back to you? Yeah, now I want an answer. 42. That's not an answer. Okay. Do you know uh, what the equator was derived from, Dumbo, as you're using it as a so-called proof? What's that? Do you know what the equator was derived from? Third time this question's been verbalised. I, I think it's something to do being a presupposed uh, sphere or something like that. Sorry, I'll ask it again. This will be the fifth time it's been verbalised. Do you know what the equator is derived from? No, I don't. Right. So you're Thanks. thick. Am I? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it is okay. You're cool. thick. Why are you here making arguments with people who are clearly your intellectual superior? Why are you here, yeah, Dumbo? Really Why are you here? Serious. Why are you here? here? Uh, try to listen to the question. I don't want to have to make you repeat it back to me like an eight-year-old. Why are you here? Why am I here? Um, just a chat. Meet, make new friends. Yeah. Discuss the uh, shape of the, the earth. You didn't really think it all through, though, did you, Jimmy? Why is that? Because well, over maybe, 200 maybe. people are now listening to you make a complete dumbass out of yourself and demonstrate your own stupidity. And when I assert that you're a dumbo, you agree and say, OK. Whatever, I don't care if you want to... Well, then you're a thicko. If you are here because you're a masochist, then don't come here. I'm not interested in torturing idiot masochists, OK? No, let's... Jimmy. Don't stutter. Just either sod off or stop talking. Try to listen and be educated by people smarter than you. That's your opinion. Not my opinion. You have just demonstrated your stupidity to over 200 people. Okay. Yes, okay. You have demonstrated your stupidity here. You are, in fact, stupid. Really? Yes, really. You are a thicko. You have demonstrated your stupidity live in front of 200 people. I hope you are proud. I am very proud. Can I ask a question? It's a number. No, you can keep your mouth shut. You're a dumbo and offer nothing. Don't ask me anything. 
You don't understand what you are talking about. You don't understand why your assertions are what they are. You have no idea what they are based on. All you have is presupposition because you are a retard with a religious belief of R. So in R we trust, go in peace. Hey, Nathan, can you hear me? Hey, Nathan, can you hear me? I can. Bit of an echo, but can I hear you? Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm just a little bit disappointed that Jimmy didn't just ask, so what are or what is the equator based upon? What is it derived from? Not Don't you want to know? Don't you want to know how they came to that conclusion? No, he wants to make a few friends, have a little chit. Just, you seem to move on with your own weird... I, I asked you to answer it. ...presuppositional oh. questions. Yeah, but you're asking different questions. We're, we're telling you, look, do you know what the equator, how that has been determined? You say no. Yes. And I mean, you don't seem to have any curiosity as to, well, what is it derived from? Because I don't think it's of any importance, really. But, do you, but you don't know. You don't but know you're what, having the how conversation, can you know it's not Jimmy. Of importance? How can you know it's Jimmy. not of importance if you don't know it? Then answer the question, exactly. Darwin. Jimmy. How many times do you want to say answer the question? Well, how can okay. you, how can you, I can answer you, you have proof when you don't even know the, the fundamental assumptions of what you consider to be your proof? Say that again, please. I said, how can you come in here and assert that you have this proof when you don't even understand the fundamental uh, principles underlying your so-called proof? It's not actually a principle, but go on. Okay, the fundamental uh, axiomatic Basis. assumptions behind the logic of your proof, you don't okay. understand them, right? You can't, yeah. argue, you can't defend them in an argument. So that you don't really have proof you just are assert you're just making an assertion that's what i was saying at the beginning is that you've made this assertion that that's the only possible explanation for the observations that's what you have to defend in this argument that it's the only possible one not that it not that it works in your mind or that it works on some level no, that it's that, the only possible one that's that's the only that's, possible one no, okay. Nami's, Nami's argument is correct. How do you, how do you, North and South Pole stars do not work on a flat plane. Yeah, so they can. Work. You can argue what you want. Yeah, they can. How do you, okay. I have a, no, I no, have no, no, a theoretical listen, model that please, has it. Prove that, please. Which one? An argument that proves that claim. That that's the only possible explanation. Make the argument. You're just asserting it. You're not making but it. On a flat argument. plane. You have the answer. answer. I'll answer it if you want me to. Sure. Okay, on a flat plane, if you were in South Africa, South America, South Africa. Oh, so Say again. Come on, give him a break. Let him talk. On a flat plane, if you were in South America, South Africa, and Australia, and you looked to what we say would be south, yeah, then you'll be looking in opposite directions. If you look generally south, I know Sleeping Warriors left, you would be looking at roughly the pole star. So how can you explain that then? Okay, but but then we have to examine your assumptions about what it is that no, we're looking at. No, you don't have to any, uh, examine my assumptions. You have to answer that question. Well, we don't, on, don't claim to have, yeah, but we don't claim to have a model of what it is you're looking at. And well, since answer that. This, is know, real, this is real world stuff. To know, since you claim to know as a fact, that yeah. that's the only possible explanation, yeah. then you're that then it's incumbent on you, not on me. I'm not claiming to understand what this is. Nothing's are. ever incumbent on you to explain anything, is it, Noe? Well, I'm not the one making the assertion. I'm asking There's you a question. It's, incumbent on me to, it's not incumbent on me to to uh, explain your assertion. No, it's no, not. No, it's, it's on you to explain my or to answer my question. No, it's not. It's called a burden of proof reversal, yet another logical fallacy. No. You've asked yeah. me to explain my no, 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 your argument. I've asked you a question and you can't answer it. You're choosing not to answer it. Yeah, but I what, no, but I didn't I didn't I didn't choose not to answer it. I said what what are the assumptions about what it is that we're looking at? Because yeah. you're gonna have some of those in order to make this argument, right? You're gonna say because you're saying like if we were on a flat plane, we could never possibly see this, then 
it, it's uh, tantamount to claiming that you know what we're looking at exactly. Well, you're a flat earther, I assume. I, I, uh, I'm a globe skeptic, yes. A globe skeptic, okay. <laughs> You're not fully in the entrenched, then, are you? Know I mean? Well, I don't claim, I don't pretend to know what's going, about what the universe is. So I'm not exactly an anything earther, but I do. Just I, against the globe, the then. The seems globe to, pardon me. You, you're you're not anything, but you are against the globe and against the globe skeptic. So it seems, Jimmy, when you hear the words flat Earth, it, it seems that you think people have come from another planet called flat Earth and understand the dynamics, the mechanics of this planet called Flat Earth. Yeah. Hey, Spurs. Hey, Spurs. Let's get to his point. Can you guys hear me now? Hey, John. Yes, John. Yeah, yes. hi, John. Hi, John. Hey, let me ask you. I just want to make sure I got his claim right. One of his claims, anyway. He said that you can't see Polaris below the equator, right, south, and you can't see the Southern Cross north of the equator. Is that what he said? Yeah. I got a document. I got a document right here that pummels that claim. I'm sure you don't. Um, False. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat and I'll go ahead and read it right here. One second. Polaris and the Southern Cross, both seen between the northern latitude 20 feet, 25.53, longitude 35.46, and between the 12th and 13th degrees south latitude. The London Times, May 13th, 1862, in the Naval and Military Intelligence, says on the 19th of April, in latitude 25.53, longitude 35.46, Captain Wilkins reports that the Southern Cross and the Polar Star were both distinctly visible at midnight. Captain Edward Gillett stated that he has observed the same thing between the 12th and 13th degrees south latitude. From the Observer, Volume 9, Issue 551, 20 July, 1889, and I'll post it in the side chat. Hmm. Are you there when he is open? <laughs> well, th you know, the no, I wasn't alive in 1889. Specify whether he's at north or south latitude. But, Say again? Uh, I said the, one of the problems with that document is that it doesn't specify if he was at north or south latitude. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it does. It's a juxtaposition. Captain Edward Gillett said that he has observed the same thing between the 12th and 13th degree south latitude. That means the other captain's visit uh, uh, observation was north latitude. But it's weird that it doesn't say that. I always found that. I'm like, why does... I just told you. I appreciate your honesty there. Yeah, Which, you... Okay, I don't know, but those are two separate things, so why, I don't see why that those things become like, what those things have to do with each other, they're two separate documents, aren't they? No, they're the same document. Okay, so I one of them is the London Times, May 13th, 18th. You're not quoting Eric DeBay, are you, by the way? The other ones, no. the, they're not the no. same document. It's one of them. They are the same document. No, one of them's from 1889, one of them's from 1862. Oh my goodness gracious, I got the document right in front of me, nummy num. Listen, guys, we don't have to shout here. Come on. No, no. I mean, Jesus, oh, man. No, but there's no need, for shouting. There's no need yeah, for shouting. Yeah. Just have a civil conversation. Isn't one of them quoting the London Times from 8th, 13th, 8th, 6th, and one of them quoting the Observer? They're, not, they're both reported in the same document. Yeah, I know, but they're two separate documents. So they've just yeah, been, they've been collated into one document. It's quite simple. Okay, then let's just use the last one. Captain Edward Gillett stated that he has observed the same thing between the 12th and 13th degrees of south latitude. We'll just use, um, I'll just stick with that one. Yeah, okay. I just okay, always, well, so, it, I'm just saying. Like, at this point, at this point, that I, that I, I get, I get all this. I find strange that that document, they don't specify what, what, how you can just say a latitude. Yeah, I heard you the first three times, I'm sticking with the last one. Yeah, okay. I'm right. just I'm just pointing that out for uh, interest's sake because it's very weird to not specify that. Well, you can go so ahead and read not. the document. It's in chat. Yeah, I've read it before. Okay. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear Jimmy's uh, response to that now. I mean, Since past that, a certain that was his past, whole argument. A certain point past the southern hemisphere, you can see the North Pole star. But it is very limited in what you can see. And once once you get past a certain point after that, you cannot see it at all. Wait, wait a second. You shouldn't be and, able to and, see it on 
your on on your spinning ball, not at the twelfth and thirteenth degrees south of Latitude. You're, you're just trusting. You're just trusting one person for reference. Uh, I'm trusting you. And what are you? Who are you trusted? Say again. All right. That who was that was going to be my question. Who, who am you I trust? Trusting? Eons. Yeah. Eons. You're trusting eons. <laughs> eons of research and discovery. By right. Who? Really. Or, yeah. Really. That's a terrible argument. Like that. Put that in the chat. But Jimmy, I want to get back to the point, which is that you you are not you're failing to defend your assertion, your basic I'm not, assertion. I'm not, I've asked you a question, you have answered it. No, 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 no. You've made this assertion that that yeah. the globe model is the only possible explanation for the observations that are made in the so-called hemispheres. Mm -hmm. That's but that's the argument you have to defend. That that's the only possible explanation. That's what you're because asserting. I can't see that that, how that would work. Can you? Your lack of imagination. So you don't understand how it could possibly work. Therefore, it's proof that that's the only explanation. Can, can no, you understand how any of shape could work? Yes. Yes, I can. Right. Then explain it to me. Then, Jesus. It's very, very simple. You take away the presupposition that the globe of the heavens oh, are in fixed literal positions, and then being forced to assume that they are surrounding. A earth that can only be globe shaped. It's very simple. Why are you giving him an explanation? I gave it him before he doesn't even seem to understand or remember. No, no, no. We don't need to give him our explanation to pummel his nonsensical claim. Well, I already explained. You just mentioned presupposition 10 times. It's not an explanation. Oh, just twice. We don't have to provide an explanation to you. You have to validate your claim. Is this scientific evidence, by the way? Jimmy. Wait a second. Is this scientific evidence, by the way? Uh, uh, I'm not going to go down that route of scientific evidence. This, because yeah, you better not go down that route because I'll pummel it with a shovel. Really? Yeah. Well, Jimmy, you do you do claim that these things are facts, right? <laughs> Say again. Right, Jim, you do claim that this these things are facts. Yeah, right? they are. Okay, so what? So you have to provide evidence that those are facts and not just you know one possible explanation that may you know that we've found lots of contradictions with that explanation in other Seriously, areas it's I, not a logically I, consistent explanation i, I like always find it there's funny no, there's clearly no rotation yeah. has, has that ever occurred to you that there's no measurable no that's false that's false is it that's okay false. that's false <laughs> that's you, just, you, you just assert things you don't you're not yeah. no, it's false arguments I'm gonna back it up but it's false okay Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, assume a lot of us live in the Northern Hemisphere. Is that a fair assertion? No, it's a presupposition. I've explained no, okay. this to a, you a five times. Jesus, uh, presupposition, assertion. Who lives in the Northern Hemisphere here? Nobody. That's just your concept of a model. We don't live on a model. Nobody lives on the Northern Hemisphere. That's a concept that you are forcing us to accept right at the beginning of whatever example you give us. That's because all you have is a begging the question fallacy telling us to accept your assertion which is basically a presuppositional argument i've explained it to you again and again and again you're just too okay. stupid Can to I ask get a question, it please? i live north of the equator line right thank you i so i also do and i assume shouty man over there lives in, in the north america right what for you we can only see polaris we do not see sigma antantis or whatever it's called Ever. Yes. So, what? so, what does that mean? So what? Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. What does that mean? I understand. It doesn't mean how, it. How, how does that prove that I'm on a spinning ball? It proves you're on a ball. How? Because how? See that's underneath just what us. I'm asking you. Because it proves that again? you can't see underneath us, surely. You tell us. So yeah. it proves that I can't see but something this, in the sky. You, okay, that, therefore, that? I'm on a ball. Sigma Antatis is a real star. As in, like, I know you're going to go, oh, it's made up, it's all in the space, and it's projection. It's all right. He's, he's just said that if you go into a different uh, position and those stars are no longer visible, it must be underneath you. So I'm going to try and get you to conceptualize something, okay? Well, you, you're in a, you. a house and you're looking up at the light bulb in that room. You then yeah. walk... 200 yards out the front door and you can no longer see it even if you look right. through the front door you can't see it does that mean that right. it's underneath you 
I don't know why you wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'll try again. Just listen. Maybe if you went down a hill or something. Just listen. You've got a light bulb. It's about yeah. 10 feet above you. Yeah? Yeah. In open space. Or let's keep it outside because obviously this is too difficult for you. So you. you've got a lamp post. Yeah? Yeah. And it's, I don't know, 20 feet in the air. You yeah. walk further and further and further away and eventually yeah. you can't see the lamppost anymore. Does that mean it's okay. underneath you? No. So why would you assert that so, if you walk further away from some lights in the sky, that they are suddenly underneath you? Because they're not like a lamppost in a in a field. Why? 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 Sorry, is it? hold on, hold on, chocolate. It's just the light. Hold on, in chocolate. The sky. Hold on, hold on. Why can we see in the nor in what weight class is the northern hemisphere? Why can we see the north pole star, and people in Australia, South America, South Africa? can see the southern pole star and we can't see that again you've inserted a presupposition you've called it a pole star yeah and you have said that we are traveling on the northern and southern hemisphere in your example you can't help but beg the question it's quite pathetic because i've now pointed this out I'm asking don't you interrupt to explain it. You, don't you interrupt yards you're interrupting you're being very rude yeah I'm not have, being rude at all. You are. You're interrupting I, me I've while not, I I've say for the, the only thing I've said is Stop talking, please. Can you stop talking? You have asked me why people in the northern hemisphere, something that I yeah. laboured the point of earlier when I explained to you that by saying the okay. word hemisphere, you are placing okay. us on a sphere. Why in Europe and North America? etc do we see the north pole star and we can't see the south pole star and people in australia south america and south africa can see the south pole star and can't see the north pole star okay. same reason as i gave you with an example i.e a lamp post that's above you that you can walk away from and eventually it will go away that is not in any way an indication that that lamp post is suddenly underneath you. It doesn't mm -hmm. indicate that in the slightest. How, how far would you have to go away not to see a lamppost? Sorry. It does not demonstrate that that lamppost has gone underneath me. Exactly. Right, so you're saying... <laughs> yeah, but think about it. I don't need to. I've given you this explanation because I'm not stupid. We established about 15 minutes ago that you are most definitely stupid. Yeah, that's what we established with you. So you can have a little chuckle about your own stupidity, but everyone watching knows it implicitly by now. You're dumb. You haven't made any arguments. Right. Uh, really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, you can keep saying yeah and right. That's great. But I have Okay, well, well you, you have, have seen it. You have to validate. We don't have to explain your claims. You do you have to scientifically validate your claims. You're Are we ready? You're either Are we ready? Hey Nathan, you and you believe in a flat plane that you live. Fair enough. I'm saying that doesn't work with what we see around us in the natural world. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It's like a lamppost in a field, and the further you walk away, you get away from it. Fair enough. But that doesn't work in in terms of what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, in it terms of your opinion, it's, it's the exact same thing. Jimmy, and then you start Jimmy, like Jimmy. In your presupposition that the stars are all in fixed positions, turning around us, or we are turning underneath it, right? Well, let's well, let, let him. Let him. Let him. Let him. Let him. Go ahead. It, it became interesting now because now Jimmy, for the first time, I think, has heard you know the opposition. He's he's now heard that the stars are too far away, so. Uh, Jimmy, how would you, how would either of us prove? You say it's because of curvature. We say mm -hmm. it's because it's too far away. Uh, can we can we now finally get to a bit of science, yeah, and find out who is telling the truth, Jimmy? Well, I don't yeah. want to okay. do any science route because all that ends up is you go down the scientific method, and Nathan doesn't quite understand what he's talking no, about. No, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh sorry. yeah, right. We got it right here for everyone to see. Oh, hold on a second, just a second. Look, so Jimmy, do you agree yeah. now? Look, because you came in and said. Well, ha ha ha! It's not the other side of the earth, and we said, "Well, no, it's because it's too far away." So now you, so how 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 do we go about finding out who's telling the truth, Jimmy? How do we go about it? Yeah, you said it's underneath us, and we say it's too far away. So obviously, you haven't heard that before about it's being too far away. 
I, I, I kind of heard you think about that. Well, mm, I just don't believe that. that. That's what you kind of like. So how do we go about finding out who is telling the truth? What what way, what method, what's, what do we do to find out if you're telling the truth or if we're telling the truth? Instead of, you know, instead of name calling, getting excited, how do we find out? Well, you'd have to go down the latitude and measure the angle to the pole star. I don't have that capabilities on me at the moment. How do you measure prove angle. just getting further away from you? Measure the angle. Is angle a natural phenomenon? This is what you want to do, guys. You want to go down uh, the scientific method. It's got to be. Yeah, we do. <laughs> what the scientific How method dare is. we? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> science involved. So what, do you, what kind of proof are you claiming? Right. The scientific proof? Or is it logical proof? What kind of proof is it? Or is it just your it's common sense? Both. No, look, we're not going to get anywhere unless we make sense of what Jimmy, how he makes sense. Like, to him, it's obvious if there's a north and south, it has to be a board. But obviously, he, just, he thinks you don't need science. So we're trying to find out Jimmy's methods so we can show him, obviously, again, that is incorrect. Because he's thinking, I think, for the first time, you know, possibly it could be far away, but he'd want that demonstrate. You'd want proof, right? You'd want the scientific method to show that it's distance and not curvature. Would that be fair, Jimmy? Is it Nummy, gatekeeper? Is it Nummy? That's the first key, mate. Yeah. Sorry, do, do apologize first. Um, I don't want to go down this scientific method because I've seen a lot of these shows. And this is kind of why <laughs> I'm on I'm here. Asking you that, Jimmy, I'm asking you. How do you do it? Sorry, how Spurs, I was talking then for a second. So. What kind of proof are you offering then, Jimmy? Well, just don't want to make a scientific world proof and proof and fact. But you guys yeah. seem to want to stick. Okay, but what kind of proof is it? Okay, because well, there's like there's different contexts that the word proof is used in. So I'm saying, you're saying, okay, it's not a scientific proof because you don't want to go down that route, right? So what kind of proof is it? Would it be a religious proof? <laughs> Could it just be that you're making an assertion that you haven't argued anything in this entire... It's logical reasoning. Okay, so it's a okay, logical proof. Hey, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy can, I, can, I, can I ask? He said, no, no, no. Hold yeah, on, right. chocolate. Hold on. That he chocolate said... He said it was like, sorry, my computer's acting up. I didn't mean to shout. Okay, um, I'll go for it. Uh, he said a logical proof. So he needs to post the syllogism. So post the syllogism if it's a logical proof. Uh, can you explain what a syllogism is, please? Oh, my God. You don't know what a logical proof is, then. <laughs> uh, again, I think we have to be patient. A lot of these... And the these guys are coming off the back of indoctrination. So they're not going to know these terms, these words. You know, we kind of have to kind of walk with them. And Jimmy, well, I know. Okay, okay. Sorry no, to interrupt, guys. Yeah, Sorry. Please, bear with me. Bear with me. Guys, 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 hold on one second. What I am interested in is, um, Jimmy, you said, I've watched a lot of these shows and yeah. I don't want to offer scientific proof for, and then you got interrupted. So I would like to hear your reasoning behind that. So, please say that again, Nathan. So you, one of your reasons was I don't want you said something along the lines of to paraphrase what you said I don't want to go down the scientific route I've seen a lot of these shows and then you got cut off I would like to hear your explanation for what it is in the previous shows that makes you think I want to steer clear of something that the ball asserts is their evidence they claim science backs the ball so why would you want to steer clear of that based on what you've seen go down the scientific route because I'm not I'm not a scientist I'm not a scientist for starters I don't have oodles of information and knowledge about this sort of thing I, but i'm using a logical uh, reasoning standpoint as as my proof now the reason why i don't go down the scientific route is what happens on your show in particular nathan is you uh don't quite know what the scientific method is and i'm not the biggest uh, <laughs> okay but if we look at you know, your he doesn't know he doesn't understand hold on, guys hold on just let him get to the end of his statement what happens is you go down the same route and it ends up getting angry and you're not following the scientific method. There's no, da -da, what's this, what's this? And you're not listening to actually what the people say. And you end up muting people when they're trying to talk. Now, some people are rude, fair enough. But it, it ends up in a farce. And I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to just have a normal chat with you. I don't, I don't want to get into an argument with you. That's my point. Well, but we're arguing. What I mean, that's what we're, the point of it. It's, it's a debate, debate show. show. Hold on well, one listen, second. You're, you're, just you're one second. Just one second. Hold on. on. Hold on. Hi, Channel Q. How are you doing? Morning, guys. Oh, can I just have you. ask one question real quick? Can, can it wait? We're in the middle of something. I just yeah, that's, to... I, I expected it too. I knew you were in the middle of something. Okay, Jimmy, I just wanted to say that your logical argument is taking uh, the form of a if and only if 
the Earth is a globe, will we be able to make these observations of the but, celestial? But I, did, I did ask you, was, I don't know who asked me that question. Was it Spurs? Sorry. I did ask no, you to explain. I'm, I'm telling you that this is the form of logical argument you're making. Yes, so let's, let's extrapolate that. Only if, right? So really what is important here is that you prove the only if. Right. So if, if okay, on the flip side of that then, if I ask you, how would that work on a flat plane? Yeah, but no, you're the one making the assertion. No, right? I made the assertion, and I, and I you know, in my you're own opinion, believe only in mind, correct, prove only my observations of the real world. I'm asking you, how would that work on a sub? On a That's not an plane? answer. That's not an answer. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. No, you're defending Jimmy, you're not, you're not. assertion. No, I'm not defending my assertion. You're the one making the claim. Right. You in that? So you've said if and only if. So now you have to explain why only if. We, we, we did this about 20 minutes ago, to be honest. No, we didn't. We did. No, we didn't. We talked about shapes and stuff. No, you talked about shapes and stuff, but that's not the point anyways. It because... kind of is. The whole point of the flat earth debate is about shapes, surely. Yeah, but you're not... Right. But you have not logically you're claiming that you're making a logical argument based on the form of an if and only if argument but you have not made any kind of coherent logical explicit uh statement about why it is only if i have twice and, and turning it around on me is not has nothing to do no, with that I, I asked you this question several times and no one's answered. i know but you're not you're you're trying to defend your assertion by asking me a question it's not it doesn't work like that no i i, I would like to think i've defended my assertion several times like and then i'm asking you a question to flip side it so that you can answer the question from your perspective what is the question you're asking I asked you two, two questions. I'll start with one of them. If you're on a flat plane, how does the Southern Star work? How, on a flat plane? Do you think about the, the where South Africa, South America, South Africa and Australia are on a flat plane, yeah? How would the Southern Pole Star work? Now, I asked this question before, and Anthony Riley left, because he doesn't want to answer it. How does that work? How does a Southern Pole Star work on a flat plane? I want everyone in the chat to have a think about that. They'll obviously call me all sorts of names. I appreciate that, but that's fair enough. Nobody's called you anything. Say again? Nobody's called you anything. You've asked your question. Everyone's been very civil and listened to your question. Want the other question, or do you want to mull over that one? Can I ask my question? Well, he's well, just got way, to the... I don't want you to hijack the climax of his question, so you can, but he's he's got a, li a nice long pause out of his question, and I'd like that to remain. Okay, so you don't want to answer the question, then. What's your question, Channel Q? Um, I'm just uh, failing to realise the equivalent between a 20-foot lamp post and a star that people can see from the UK to North America. Oh, it's yeah, not directed at me. That's directed at anybody who's going to say that a light lamp post at 20 feet is equivalent to a star that people can observe from the distance of North America to the UK. Exactly. He wasn't saying it was what an analogy. What is the distance of that star? It's, yeah, it's called an analogy. It doesn't really matter the distance of Polaris from the Earth. It Sorry, doesn't so matter the distance of Polaris from the Earth. The point is, is that you can start right underneath, directly underneath Polaris at the North Pole and start moving towards the equator. And as you move towards the equator, Polaris will get so low in the sky that it actually ends up beneath your feet. I'm sorry, Net. I'm sorry. Uh, Polaris. How do you know it's beneath the, your Hold on feet. a second. One at a time. I'm sorry. Because Polaris, of the angle it... that you can observe it at is wow. below 26 degrees. And if you continue to go towards the equator, it will get lower and disappear. Perfect. That's how Perfect. I know it went beneath my feet because I watched it sink beneath my feet. Well, first of all, Polaris- And I'd like some honesty from everybody telling me your head at that the North a 20-foot lamp Q, post is equivalent Q. to a star that Hold on, that hold on, hold on guys. Distance. Channel Q, you've asked a question, then paused. Somebody started answering you, and then you've said the same thing again. Is there any chance you can let someone respond to you? I will apologize, excuse me. Can I answer? Hold on a second. I said, well, she claimed that Polaris was 90 degrees above her on the North Pole. 
Uh, that's incorrect. Can you define true magnetic and grid north for us, please? It has oh. nothing to do with what I said, and you know it. Sorry, you've defined it specifically as 90 degrees above our heads. Now he's asking you for your references and has given you all of them and asked you to define them. What's wrong with no, that? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't Sorry, given do you wanna... anything. All he's Q. done is asking. Will... All he's done Q. is saying that Listen. I'm wrong about the star being 90 Shut degrees up. above my head. Shut and up. And asked me to explain Shut up. something about magnetism. Shh. I will get him to repeat the question to you. Can you I'd repeat like the question, question please, question John? First. How about that? How about somebody explain to me how a that means you shut up and he repeats the question. Q. The Q. I'll say it Tell one more time. Between the two. You're talking this over me. I, mean, I will you're, ask him you're, to repeat you're, you're the question. Now. Hold on, Choc chocolate. Hold on. John will repeat his question if he's willing. Please don't interrupt him. What about him. my question? Can my question please be answered? Yeah, and we are defining terms. Yeah, I know. You're redefining terms. Do, do you understand terms, what defining terms you means, Q? Q, Q, that was about three seconds that before you opened your mouth again. That has to do with the fact that I'm asking you what is the equivalence between a 20-foot lamppost and a star that can be seen from North America to the UK, which is the distance of, like, what, 4,000 yes, miles, 3,000 miles? We answered. gave answer, the answer. Go. Hold on, guys. Did you hear the answer that was given? No, I have not heard That's because you don't shut up. It's called an analogy. Do you understand what an analogy Not is? Not an equivalent analogy. It is a shit analogy, dude. Because a 20-foot lamppost cannot be seen from North America to the UK, um, but the North I, Star most certainly can be seen from that great of a distance. But I understand analogy. Yeah, well, unfortunately, there isn't a light in the sky that's a lamp. It's not supposed to be exactly the same. It's an analogy. Something on a smaller scale so that you can wrap your head around it. That's what an analogy is. I mean, I don't really understand why you're saying your analogy isn't identical to the thing you're comparing it to. That's ludicrous. Yeah, it wouldn't be a very good analogy if it was absolutely identical in every respect to the thing that I'm trying to compare it to, to make it more simple. You know, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that you would say that that's a false equivalent. It's exactly the same. You are presenting a false equivalent. You an are analogy. by saying a twenty-foot lamp post is equivalent to the North Star. I'm not saying it's equivalent. It's an analogy. Yes, you are. You're saying that somebody should be able to see a twenty-foot lamp post as well as they can see the North Star. Did not use the word equivalent. Yeah. Nobody Channel used Q. that word. He's not saying that. Channel Q. Wow. Wow. Your question. Wow. Let them wow, you guys. Wow. Come on. Channel Q. Channel Obviously, Q. a twenty-foot lamp post is nowhere near. Channel Q. Channel Q. The visibility of the North Star. Nowhere near. Hey, Channel Q. Q. How you doing, part-time vegan? Can you, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can. You've asked the perfect um, question. Hello? Can you hear me? I just never have any just ideas. Just let them ask you. Yeah, we can hear you. Can't you guys hear me? Yes, part. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Da, Hold da, on. Da. Hold on. We got 30 people talking. Hello? Let them answer the question, Channel Q. We can, we can hear you, part-time. We hear you. Anyone answering that question from Channel Q? <laughs> I think vegan yeah. can't hear us. What question? The fact Someone that can so, hold on, bear with me, because otherwise we'll have vegan analogy. interrupting. The hold fact on, that chocolate. Your bear with me, Q. Just bear with me. Equivalent. Just try and have some patience. The discussion of <sighs> trying to determine whether or not the North Star gets beneath your feet by comparing it to a twenty-foot lamppost. Do we have proof that it is there beneath your feet? You can see it. It appears. It disappears. Yeah. The fight you know what? The problem is Arwen how do you, how can you prove that it is six seconds. Talk so Arwen got six seconds before channel Q interrupted him yeah that's what she she got six seconds is how long you get to answer channels Q's very obnoxious very loud repeated at nausea question six seconds unbelievable I don't know if she'll ever shut up she'll probably never shut up this entire time nobody will get more than six seconds of air to actually answer a question she'll just talk at nausea very obnoxious woman. Very tiring. Don't know how people put up with people like that in real life. But yeah, she's literally talking non-stop. She cannot keep her mouth shut. Are you ever going to pause for breath, Channel Q? Going to pause for a minute? No? Just going to talk continually? Channel Q? Waiting for you to shut up. Jesus wept. You refuse to answer my question, but you want to ask me questions. He's just talking non-stop, shouting into a mic so no one can hear anything. Just rumpusing the hangout, basically. 
being as obnoxious and as loud, not letting anyone actually, actually answer the question. That's what she's here to do, just disrupt and be rather obnoxious and loud. A bunch of little e dishonest cowards. On See, just here with her ad hominem attacks, not actually giving anybody any opportunity to answer anything. Talking constantly. Sad. Pathetic ploy that the Globers have. While Channel Q does this... You think that you have anything to do with honesty and science? I'll point out that there is no globe argument and no scientific evidence for the globe, none whatsoever. This is the best the Globers have to offer at the moment. Someone like Channel Q coming in and screaming like a crazy woman into a mic. Jimmy speaking, You're on, I'm on your side yelling. and you, you asked a really ridiculous. good question. You I know I asked a really good question and now I'm acting like now. Four seconds. So Dan got four seconds. Arwen got six. The time between her little mic dancing up and down, which I'll now show you is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Is she ever going to shut up? Probably not. What do you reckon, Q? Any chance anyone else is going to get an opportunity to talk while you're on this hangout? So that this is what the rest of your show not is like. And go ahead and end it and start a new one because I'll just join that one and end <laughs> You see, this is, this is the kind of mad bastards we get on this show. It's very entertaining for the audience. Look at, the, look at those little lights dancing around while I tell everybody that there is no sphere. It's just a model. There's no proof of it. You guys have got no scientific evidence. You've just got batshit crazy cat women like this girl coming in shouting at us. That's all you've got to offer. Pretty pathetic. But there we go. Let's see if I can say hello to this new guest. Hello. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Can you hear uh, did us, somebody Chris? kick her? No. That was funny. Hey. <laughs> hey, Chris. Can you hear us? Wow. Yeah, I can hear you. Good right, to have can you. Can we get, can we get back joining. to Jim? Uh, wow. So I think I think can I just say one thing? Yeah, obviously we got interrupted there, but the the lady had quite a a good question about the <laughs> really the analogy part of it. You're talking about uh, Polaris going lower and lower into the sky as you get move away from the North Pole. Yeah, and an going, going underneath your feet. Yeah, oh, yeah but she has. Yeah, no but she she literally said she watched it go beneath her feet. Yeah, and I told her like, do you have proof? It is physically beneath your feet is it ever observed to be beneath one's feet or does it just disappear beyond the horizon and she got really really angry started yelling like a yeah she did herself a bit of disservice though if i'm being honest but like i think the she question just made herself look question. ridiculous and then you still haven't answered my question but anyway J jimmy give us your question again okay on a flat plane if you're in south america South Africa and Australia. All at the same time. The same you. star by looking south. <laughs> I don't understand the question. Are, 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 all three of you, have you ever been there, Jimmy? Yes, have I have. And all three continents as yes, well. I have. Can you can you tell us what happens in the sky? How does that tell us what shape the land that you're standing on it? Can you give us a cor correlation? Well, uh, uh, see, the, the problem is, yeah. When I ask a question back, I get told, oh, you can't ask a question with a question. But when someone does it to me, that's okay. Is that fair, Nathan? No, no you make a correlation between what happens above you to the shape of the earth that's, that you're standing yeah. on. And give totally. us a correlation, get, get that connection. Totally. Are, are you saying that, you don't believe in space? Is that your... I didn't say that, no. It has no, nothing no. to do with it. Hang on, no. hang on, Arwen, Arwen. If I look out the window, it doesn't tell me what... It doesn't tell me what the room that I'm sitting in is like. What? If I look out the window to the outside, it doesn't tell me what my room that I'm sitting in is like. Are you saying to, you're, you're, that's another analogy? Yeah, not Arwen, you're, you're, Arwen, hold on, hold on. Just let it be one on one. You, you need to make the correlation with what's happening up above you to the shape of the land that you're standing on. Okay, if I look out the window in South America and look out a window in South Africa and I look out a window in Australia and I look south, I will see the same star. On a flat plane, that does not work at all. And it's no, yeah, it does. It you, does. Need to make, you need to make the connection though with what's happening above you to the, the land you're standing on. Yes. How does it do that? That's the natural world around us. <laughs> no, no, it's not, Sunshine. Think about what yeah, you're Yeah, but he hasn't proven his claim yet. He uh -huh. said he can see it out his window at the same time. What we need from you at yep. those three locations we need at the same time documented and we need to see a magnetic azimuth pointing to where you're looking at each of those locations at the same time then John, come back John, are you saying, uh, John, 
John, you're going a different direction from me. I want to know how you correlate between what you're standing on to what you observe up above you. See, again, you're, I'm not being funny. I don't know who I'm speaking to at the moment. I'm Mark. Hello, Jimmy. Hi. Um, I've asked you a question how that would work, because that is the fact. That is fact. You can do that. You're, 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 making, an observation. you're, you're making an observation and drawing a conclusion. And yeah. I'm saying there's a gap. And, I'm, and then I'm then asking you how you can make that work on a flat plane. No, no you, there's a gap. I want to answer it. What you observe. Everybody hates it when I do it, but I want to answer it. It's very simple. You take away the presupposition oh, that what you see in the sky, that globe of stars spinning, yeah. that that is physically literal and then it works perfectly no it doesn't yeah it does <laughs> okay wait, 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 wait. can, can yeah, i, can I jump in? take them can as jump in? what they can are can i jump in still, the, still the relationship still holds up even if you don't why not everyone else has okay the, the, hey, it has Jimmy. angular Jimmy. relations to the position of the earth and that's it doesn't prove the shape yeah so, so hold on jimmy jimmy let, let, let me bounce in on what our is uh, saying so do, do you know what a rainbow is right i'm pretty sure you've seen a rainbow right oh we're not doing the rainbow one again are you please well 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 I, I, you need to understand this because let's say i'm I, i'm an observer and i'm standing in um uh let's say north america right okay and, and i'm looking at a rainbow right yeah and, and then I, I i triangulate uh the rainbow's distance from me right and then there's a there's an observer that's a mile ahead of me. He triang he triangulates um the rainbow as well. Do you understand that we would get the same uh, number if we both try to triangulate that rainbow? Yep. So so that could be how the stars are working. There's it, it, it's no. an apparent position, not a actual solid position. No. Yeah. Rainbows are, occur through light and water vapor in the air. This is something that appears every single night. As instructed, is fully mapped out and has been. For okay, but do, do you understand how the rainbow doesn't have a solid position? Do you understand that? Part? I understand that. Yeah. So, how do you know the stars have a solid position? Because they, they've been coming on for every single night that since you've been alive and for eons before that, and exactly. Eons. The same position. So, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let me reply. Let, 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 let me reply. Let me reply. So, so basically, just because we see the stars, therefore they have a solid position. Um, in relation to how we see them, how we view them, yeah. Obviously, yeah. it changes over angular uh, position. Again, that's again, right. We can, but we can angular we... position, not a right. literal position. Right. Angular okay. position. Can I just point out you still haven't answered my question? No, but no. but I asked you. I asked you. I asked you. How do you know the stars have a solid position? You just said that they do, but you haven't proved that they do. I have proved that they do. How? 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 You made an observation and a conclusion. Eon. Years. Navigating. Oh, yeah. body awesome. Awesome. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Over thousands of thousands of years, I will give you that. But they have been navigating oh, for hundreds of thousands of years. Right, <laughs> right. We also we also have been seeing rainbows for thousands, thousands of thousands of years. Of years. So oh, how long have we been on the boats, or anywhere really walking? Right, right. Probably hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. So just because we've seen uh, stars for thousands of years, we also seen rainbows for thousands of years. So how does your argument prove that um, stars have a solid position? Okay, let's take the thing that say the stars are a solid position. Let's just say that, yeah? Why, why would I take that step? I don't know if they do or not. Well, let's just say they do. No, okay. it's a presupposition. I mean, I've just had this with Jimmy, and now we got it over and over again from Jimmy. He just wants to force a presupposition on every member of the panel. Every argument that you have is a presupposition, Jimmy. Just saying, well, no, let's just assume they're physical because I can't prove it. That's the point of what he's asking let's you. Let's just do it, and then let's just... Say that they are. No, that's the point. He's asking you to prove physicality, and you're saying, no, let's just say they are. That is the undoing of your argument. That's where he's led you to, and now you're just demanding that he accepts that they're physical. Who wants to play the game? It's not a game, right? We are being deceived on a mass level by people like you. You are part of the deception, literally. You are an unwitting participant in this deception because you unwittingly force dogma upon people like us. And when we take you through the logical steps and the fallacious arguments that you present, you get to the stage where you have no evidence and then tell us that let's just accept that they're physical. Well, let's just, let's just for this moment accept they're physical. No, no, don't you get it? Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm, I've done this so many times that I'm sick of shouting at ballers like you. Don't beg the question here. There's no need. Shame my kids on me because I would be shouting at you. She's dozing off nicely. But you're all Muppets. Can't shout it for dramatic effect. 
This guy's a retard. <laughs> He's just stupid and doesn't understand, even though we've now told him seven times, what a begging the question fallacy is. He'll never get it. He'll just get angry and start telling us that we must beg the question over and over again, a bit like Channel Q did. They just go nuts when we get to this stage. Just listen to it. We don't go down this angry route. He's saying so that Jimmy, I'm angry. The it's point is, not really me angry, it's just him talking non-stop into the mic because he's reached the point where his argument fails and he has to demand that we accept his argument. So then they rump us the hangout. Jimmy. Okay, okay. Let's not suppose they're a fixed position. Okay. Yeah, okay. let's just take what we see every single night. So we just take that for what we see every single night. Right. Yes, let's right. Yeah. Right. And agree. Look ago, and you've got like your little uh, thing on your app on your phone, for example. Or if you're good at stars, you can go. Yeah, that's that's really the cool. Ryan's belt, for example. I'm not it's very, very good. useful. It tells me exactly what the angular positions are in relation to the observer on the position of the Earth. It's very handy. It is. It is. Yeah. So let's that's just say proof. you don't know what they are, but there's some lights in the sky that appear. Every right, hold on, Jimmy. Stop. Stop. Sorry. So again, you want, and again, this is probably one of the, one of the biggest problems. You want us to replace science, natural science, with, with, with your fantasy, with your well, Jack why, story. Why is it fantasy to say? No, no, Jimmy, please hold on. No, but Jimmy, again, look, look, you, you, you spoke about sense, logic, reason. So, yeah. would it be reasonable for someone to take scientific proof, empirical evidence, for fantasy to pre, you know, to think? Let's just say, say this. Let's just say that. Does that does that make sense in itself? You know, forget about the shape of the earth. If you're proving it anything, going to court, would you go to court and just say, well, let's just say this guy <laughs> killed this guy? Would that work in court? Would that does it make sense to you, Jimmy? I'm not quite getting your logic there, but if I went into court and said, I mm -hmm. can see Orion's belt from here, I was in this place, they'll go, Okay, fair enough, because the stars are there every single night and they're all track from that. Yeah, we're That's not denying you see them. Yeah, we're not, we're not denying there's an appearance of stars every night. We right, agree. thank you. Okay, so every night we see the same stars, or whatever they are. Like That's stars. not the question. You're sidestepping and evading the I'm question. Not, I'm trying Put to get back to you. Question. Yes, you are. I'm I told to you question. to confirm your initial claim. Your initial claim was you were on three different continents and you looked out your car window, right? And That's you all see the same stars. Well, yeah. what you have to do is you have to get on those three continents and at the same time, it with the compass, true. look at those stars and then come back to provide your evidence. You don't need a compass. <laughs> you don't need a compass? No. Why not? Because you're looking at a dot in the sky. You're trying to bring in... We need position. the directions. You don't. You just look. Yeah, you do. You just look for one Jimmy. star and find that pattern of stars. Let's just explain again to the audience that his first assertion was you go to the north and you look north and there's the north star. Then you go to the south, you look south and there's the south star. Now he's saying, as I pointed out earlier, you just go to them and look and they are south because yeah. I say so. Find the stars that you're looking for in the sky and you'll see them across the different continents. Yeah, we don't disagree with that. Nobody has ever disagreed with that. It's the next step that you guys take. Yeah, where you force us to accept a presupposition. Hello, Dumbass. No, it's not a presupposition. I'm asking you, Nathan, how that would work on a flat plane. Well, it just does. We are on a flat plane. It just does. It just does work. Just walk across the flat plane and there's those stars doing their thing. Yeah? I don't pretend for one second that I know what the stars are. Yeah? I've got no idea. Literally no idea. But to make an assertion that I know A, what they are, and B, that they prove the shape of the ground beneath me, is, in my opinion... Right. Ridiculous. No, that's, a, that's a cause and effect. Mm. That's So he's saying that the cause of that is because we're on a spinning ball. Okay. That's a cause and effect question. That's a scientific proof. So let's go. Natural phenomena observed, please. They want to go down that route, guys. because it That's ends a cause and effect question. question. Why not? Because it ends up in uh, acrimonious shouting and muting and calling names. And oh, because you're Jimmy, you're, you're under, you understand. Jimmy, hold on, understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, everyone, hold on. So just, just two people at a time. So just John and Jimmy, please. Hi, John. Yeah, it's a, hi. It's a cause and effect question. You're saying because of your observations, therefore, we live on a spinning ball. That's a cause and effect question. So... What's the natural phenomena? Observe, please. 
I don't want to go down that route. Yep, because that's scientific evidence. We don't want to hear your just so stories. We want, want you to, to validate none of your you claim. I want you to answer the question, but none of you seem to answer it. Or want answer to what question? The question is, I'll say it again, John, and you don't have to shout. I don't like shouty people. It makes me nervous. Brother. But basically, John, yeah? You Go. in the southern hemisphere. Oh no, sorry, oh well, it's gonna get naked while sorry, I'll start again. You're in South America. Yeah? And you look out the window and you see a certain selection of stars, and in the middle is a certain star called Sigma Untatus. Untatus? Anyway, you go to South America Africa. You, you yeah? can't see that star, by the way. No, true, true, but it's there. If you actually look hard enough, it's there. Oh, if it's there. Okay, go ahead. Found it. You can see it if you if you know what you're doing. Anyway, you go you can't to South see Africa. It, but you, if you look hard you enough. The same star. Oh, chocolate. To hold on, Australia, hold on. Just chocolate. Just don't star. interrupt them, please, yeah. please. How does that work on a flat plane? Please answer that, John. Jimmy, uh, the only way we can find that out. Hold on. He's asking me. Spurs, just let it be one on one. Go on. Go on, John. I have an answer. Sure you do. We look. That's how we see them. <laughs> Seriously, this is embarrassing. Come on. That's yeah. actually true. Right, you've had your chance, John. You've had your chance. Spurs, you see me. No, I'm I'm still here. You have to I don't need to provide an explanation. You do, because you're, you're making claim. an initial assertion that the earth is flat. I didn't make an assertion, you did. you are you a flat earther? Oh my god. You're a flat earther, I'm, John. I'm done with this clown. I, kind of I, I kind of think taking a globe straight to a flat earther is the mistake. This is the problem, you see. This is where they're they're stumped. Because what makes sense to them, you know, is what we're trying to to break down. We're saying to him, how does he know? He doesn't understand science. So this is the point. So when, when John's yeah, saying the question, true. cause and effect, and he said, oh, I don't, uh, he's afraid to go down that route. He doesn't realize he's doing it naturally. He's saying, well, North Star, South Star, that, that must mean um, a globe. So one would ask, how do you know that, Jimmy? How do you know that? How do you find that out? And John's saying, well, you have to use science. You're saying, well, I don't want to, but you are doing want, it anyway. I don't want to on this. I'm not one. I'm not a scientist. Sorry to interrupt you. Jimmy, 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 stop, stop. You're already, you've already started the process of using science. That's what you're, either you have to be completely quiet or say, okay, we have a North Star, we have a South Star, so therefore it must be a globe. The, this instantly you've stepped into the rounds of science. This is what I don't think you're getting. This is why you're saying, I don't want to talk science, but then you start talking science. It doesn't I'm make sense. Observation, anyway. Okay, here, okay can I, let me jump into real quick. So basically, um, obviously Jimmy's conceptualizing uh, the AE projection where you have somebody in uh, Australia, uh, Southern America or whatever, and they're all looking in opposite directions and they're seeing the same stars. That's what he's conceptualizing. But my question to him is, how do you know that they're looking in different directions? Like, how do you know... Um, because to do this, you're actually postulating um, the uh, positions of the continent. So how do you know they're looking in opposing directions? How do I know they're looking in opposing? I don't know. They're not they're looking in the same direction. What? Okay. So like, basically, so basically, it sounds like you just like watched like cool hard logic and then came to debate because you're you're, you're basically saying how can somebody uh, in Southern America, in Australia, and in uh, Southern Africa see the same stars? Correct? Is that what you're asking? In effect, yeah. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually asking it on a flat plane, on a flat plane, whatever shape you want to make that, make it a flat plane. Okay. So when you say flat plane, what, what are you conceptualizing? Are you, are you conceptualizing the AE projection? Are you conceptualizing the square map? Like, what's in your whatever head? Whatever projection you want to use. I'm uh, asking, well, asking you. No, 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 no. We got an answer. John's answered this question for you. How do we see them? We open our eyes. We look. We see. That's the answer. Oh, come on, Nathan. No, no, come on. It's the same as seeing a building that you guys claim because of a model, it shouldn't be there. We just look at it and see it. Our explanation is simple. Your explanation right. is complicated because you have a pre presupposition and a religious belief. I don't, I'm not religious. Spurs, Spurs, you seem reasonable, yeah? Uh, we're all reasonable. Oh, well, well, you're asking, religious, by the way. No, what it is, we're asking the same question. But the, the thing is, I think you're missing something. You're speaking. You're talking science, but you don't even realize what you're doing. Maybe. 
But I mean, I've made an observation as a North and a South star. So therefore, the cause of that, like John's saying, is this. I, I, do, Jimmy, do you get that? Do you get that? I, what I get saying? that. As I said several times, I don't want to go down this whole science thing. Oh, he's not getting it. So maybe if I can get through to John. John, can you bring up your little form, if he's going to let me talk enough for you to hear? Can you bring up your form with the scientific method on and literally formulate it for him? Because he's already done it. He's gone through it. But if you can go through the form and fill out what we've got to date for him to show him what Spurs is essentially trying to highlight, he's already into doing science. So if we can show him that... He can then understand that it's not it's not reasonable to then say I don't want to go down that route, even though that's precisely what I'm doing to prove my point. So if yeah, if we can go through that exactly that and go through the steps of the scientific method with him, hopefully it'll cement. Hopefully it'll cement what he what what he's doing, like Spurs is trying to help him along with. Well, that's it. Yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, I just, it's I just, not you already Jimmy, got there when Jimmy, the guys start. Jimmy, it's not just with the globe of the earth. It's with anything, right? Any claim you've just said, this is because of this. So if I say this, like in chemistry, you know, if I say, well, if I do this, this, and this, this will happen because of this. So that's repeatable. You're saying this is because of this. You've already entered into the random science. So we want to know from you now, well, how do you know that? What has, what scientific experiments have you done to show because of this, this has happened? So how, this is why I asked you, how, how do you want it? How do we find out from you your way, your path to find out who is right? Because remember, we're not making any claims. Flat Earth doesn't mean like I said before. We come from the planet Flat Earth and we have all the, you know, the equations, the, the science, the math. We understand that we're not on a globe. You don't. You think you're still on this globe. So you should be, um, you know, joining John, joining Nathan, joining the rest of us to work out where we live. And we can only do that through science. If you say something, we have to test that. That's why you're getting shouted at, because we're saying, well, how do you know? How do you know? We want to test it too. We want to know what you know, basically. Because if you go on to YouTube, you can go on to astronomy sites, you can visually see it like myself, I've done... Uh, been to all those continents and seen that what I'm talking about, and mm -hmm. I'm asking you guys, congratulations, the experts congratulations. in flat earth, to show me how that would work on a flat plane. And none of you, apart from John, and I'm not even taking that as an answer because that was poor John. There's no dependent variable. Oh, he's right. So okay, but what, what, what's the it's issue? A direct answer. Answer. Oh, hold on, can they I just address it. that I while John? I'll, I'll hand over to John in a second, but let me just address that. What you ballers do is you turn something that is just seen like a building a concrete noun into an observed phenomena but there is a limitation in terms of what you are observing you can't manipulate causes of the stars but you are trying to do that you are using cause and effect arguments i.e something that you should formulate a scientific hypothesis from no, but I when it's hold on i haven't finished i haven't simple. finished so when it is formulated into a scientific hypothesis, you end up with what's on screen. So if you can, please click John's icon in the Hangout and we'll take you through it. I'll pass to John. Hopefully, yeah, you'll, be it, Hopefully you'll be patient enough to actually listen. We'll see. I'm ready. John, John's on mute. Oh, there we go. I'm ready. Natural phenomena observed. He said it. We can see octantus, which we really can't, from South America, Australia, and South Africa. Therefore, a spinning ball, right? Hello. There again. You are you looking at my screen? I I don't want to do this. I'm not answering this. You. This is your words. Oh. It's sorry, John. Sorry. These are your words that you have used. So you're saying, I don't want to do this. We are reading back your words to you and you're telling me that I don't want to do this. I've said from right from the start, I'm not doing it. Right from the start, I've said it mentioned 10 times at least that I'm not doing this. Because... I would like to get, I would like like to get a warning. So you're just a religious so, yeah. zealot, just oh. going to assert it. I'm not, religious at all. I'm not religious at all. You are, you're a religious zealot. That's what you're doing. You're just asserting your beliefs upon us. You don't want to go through the scientific method. You just want us to accept what you say. Yes, the stars are fixed in their positions and physical. Yes, we are on the northern hemisphere because I say so. 
well, you're an idiot and a religious zealot. You don't even know it. You don't even know you have a religion. Well, aren't you all these names, Nathan, but it doesn't detract from the fact. It's not a name. It's a title. It's a description of you, religious zealot. Yeah? You're here with your presuppositions and your beliefs. You turn concrete noun into phenomena because it doesn't fit your religious belief. We just look at something and see it. You look at something and say, that shouldn't be there on my begging the question model. Therefore, you know, you, you know, it's a phenomenon. I would like to get a word in. Uh, did he drop? Uh, uh, did he just comment, drop out? A comment and a question. He uh, just left. Oh. Hold on, let me just establish it, Chocolate. I know you've been waiting to talk for ages. No, he's... Yeah, he's just no, dropped. Okay. Nobody he's kicked him, right? right? He just dropped. No, he's still in the in the side check. Right? He just dropped. No, he's still in the in the. You mute your side watch check. page, Nami. Nami, Nami, you gotta mute. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so he dropped because we like before, like with Channel Q, they just rump us the hangout when it gets to the point that their argument is proven to be absolutely ridiculous, and then they just assert their religious belief over and over again that's that's it i don't know john if you can just round this well, out by going through the absolutely yeah. fallacious argument yeah well his natural phenomena observed is we can see octantis from south america australia and south africa i mean there's no context with this at all number one number two you can't see octantis right <laughs> so that's a train wreck the alternate the hypothesis it, there is no hypothesis, so I didn't. I, I don't know what his hypothesis is because there, uh, there isn't one. And so I just put it down here. Of course, his observed phenomena is we can see Octantis from South America, etc. You know what he uh, said was his phenomena observed in step one. The only independent variable I can think of is our eyes. That's the cause of us seeing Octantis from South America. So. This is a train wreck. It's a just so story. And what they do is they come in with their just so story and then they ask us to explain their just so story or give them a new just so story, right? It's moronic. They haven't explained anything. They haven't validated anything. They just have a religious belief. And then they say, well, what's your explanation, right? One moment, please. Well, Again. One moment, please. Oh, Let me show you something here. Just give me a moment. I think I passed it up. Hold on. My computer is acting up too. Okay. Common mistakes in applying the scientific method. This is from the University of Rochester Physics Department. Listen to this carefully. As stated earlier, the scientific method attempts to minimize the influence of the science's bias on the outcome of an experiment. That is, when testing a hypothesis or a theory, the scientist may have a preference for one outcome or another, and it is important that this preference not bias the results or their interpretation. The most fundamental error is to make the hypothesis for an explanation of a phenomenon without performing experimental tests. Now, what he's doing is he's not even giving us a hypothesis, right? He's just giving, uh, uh, just telling us what he observed. He doesn't make an explanation or his explanation is, well, we live on a spinning ball, but he's just giving that and then asking us for our explanation, right? It's moronic. And not only that, he refuses to address any of the evidence that contradicts his uh, assertion. It's not. It's not I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a refusal. I mean, I think he rejects the globe. I think a lot of these globers reject the globe. But what they seem to want is, um, you know, answers for the flat earth. They don't want to be left unknowing. They don't want to be... Right. Um, you know, right. they've been taught they've been taught all their lives that, you know, we are the leaders of knowledge, education, the system works best. And, you know, if we have to go back to, you know, uh, caveman understanding, you know, this is a, this is a huge problem for him. So with Jimmy, which I thought, you know, it was interesting. Um, he, I, I think he understands he's not on the globe. Uh, you know, he can't defend yeah, he it. Doesn't understand. And, just to, and just to piggyback off of that, like, 
mm-hmm. they they've been kind of spoiled because you know basically the globe offers all the answers oh we know exactly what the stars are we know how far away they are so when they come to ask us flat earth questions they want us they want us to spoon feed them mm-hmm. every single answer right. so they come with the bowl and a spoon just mm-hmm. waiting to get you know answers and stuff and not to mention a lot of times when they consider flat earth ideas they mix in their own ideas to what they already believe so he right. believes that the stars have solid positions but he has no proof to assert that the stars have solid positions but yet when he conceptualizes a flat earth he's going to keep that idea in his head so that's why that's the issue here they they're, they're mixing their ideas they're, they're unproven ideas with the idea of flat earth and it, it just becomes a big mess. And if you look at a lot of these globers, you know, half of these scientific terms that John was you know, saying, he had no idea. And this is one of the reasons why he doesn't want to go down that path because he, he hasn't been taught this. Nobody has been taught this. This is something, you know, that for the first time people are actually understanding what science and it's like, well, what? You know, I wasn't told this. No one told me. Um, you have to uh, follow a certain method or procedure. And it seems strange, um, you know, that we're telling these people, uh, you know, what they've been taught is a lie and this is how you'd go about it, finding something out. Um, like he was talking science and didn't even realize it. You know, he's saying, well, I made an observation, okay, and there's a phenomenon, you know, but he didn't have the wording for it, he didn't realize it. He's saying, well, this happens because of this. But well, you, you, as far as you, you realize, like it's their, in, it's engraved in their mentality. Because I mean, he even said it himself when he came in. He he said, you know, I'm trying to help you guys. I'm trying to give you guys facts. You know, <laughs> right, he, right. Exactly, you like, know, like, like as if we never believed the globe ourselves before, as if we're exactly, under- exactly. Like, like we haven't like, analyzed all of this shit coming from that perspective. Yeah, like know? we haven't like, heard all of this before. We what I said. Exactly. Oh, this We're people from medieval times. We haven't we haven't caught on yet. They but, seem to think, they seem to think that we're from this uh, another place like called flat Earth. Like like you guys. I, I love like, I love what you said Earth. that though. How does it work? You know, and it's like well, come on. You know, we're figuring this out right now. You know, uh, trying to give you you know the numbers, which is what you know you so desire. It's going to take time. Um, you know, we, we've come to terms with this lie as well. So I think people like Jimmy. You know, it's very interesting. You could see that. Uh, for me anyway, that he, he doesn't trust the globe. He's just repeating what he's been told and he simply wants to know, um, you know, give me the answers, give me the, the numbers from before I can tell other people. Yeah, um, and also a good angle to take with him would be to ask him where, why is there an at total absence of evidence for the alleged rotation, right? Like the physical effects that should accompany a rapidly rotating body. Where are those? Right. We could argue with him. You know, I mean, if you know, just to be to try to be fair to some people who have been brainwashed like we all have in our past is, you know, that it's very easy to point out that the Earth is clearly stationary. Right. That the the, all the expected effects of a rapidly rotating body are totally absent, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. completely absent. We're we're told they're there. It's It's just it's just there's a contradiction. It was too big. So it's like his explanation fits some of the evidence and it doesn't fit all of the evidence, right? So he's just grabbing on to this little bit of, of the evidence that it does seem to work with to the, to the total neglect of all this other evidence. But in order to come up with a, you know, proof or a fully integrated understanding of this situation, the explanation has to fit all of the evidence, all of it, every little bit of it. He clearly was very ill-informed. He didn't even know how the equator was determined. <clears throat> so he just had very little information uh, yeah, he's just to his disposal, and he filled the rest up with his belief. It was very yeah, obvious. Saying, we already know. Scientists already proved it. So don't haven't you guys heard? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, at one point, I, I wanted to try to bring him off the, the topic of, you know, the stars and... and that stuff because i mean that's again it's lights in the sky i i kind of wanted to bring it to you know a more physical aspect like of i don't know water (laughs) and the physics of water and how did that work how how does that work i mean but that that's what flat earth has become it's become explaining the stars you they want us to explain i I don't want to talk about the stars anymore like (laughs) the stars are up there i live here I know, but they're not relying on on the plane. You know, like I I don't. We should be talking. Let's talk about rotation. 
Yeah. Exactly. Because that's a much easier uh, point to for people to grasp, right? That so there's, this, there's, um, this was my uh, that too. So. And if it's this not was my you, take in, in all of this. This was my take. This is Jose right here. Uh, I'm going to try to articulate well so you can understand me. Uh, people like Johnny, they learned uh, the heliocentric model since they were very small. They accept every explanation that has been given to them. The interpretation of all the uh, celestial observations, for example. They want to come to these forums to present the heliocentric model, but with the bias that they do not want to entertain any, any other possible point of view. They do not want to think by themselves. They do not want to question. They just want to defend it. The question is why? I am not sure, but they just, it's maybe too difficult for them to question the, what they have been presented with. It's just too easy, uh, too difficult for them to question it. They just want to defend it because that's their comfort zone. I, I just thought the most telling part was when he just desperately held, tried to hold on to let's just suppose that it is and say, no, no, that's not. And he just, no, no, let's just suppose that it is. And he just kept on doing that. And that, that could have sparked a really big realization for him. But yeah, it just moved on and ignored it. Yeah, he's like, let's just skip over me actually making an argument for what I'm asserting and just assume that I'm already right. And then look, I'm right. That's what he's saying, right? Like, you know, what's interesting is that he didn't make a single argument in that entire time. All he did was make assertions over and, and over. say they're and facts. Over. Yeah, and just be like, well, think... and, then when, and when we challenge any of the presuppositional nature of any of these assertions, he says, well, let's just assume that that's true. No, let's not just assume that that's true. But, you know, we didn't get to the point where we could point out that there's inc insane contradictions. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's how the ball well, is started. It, it always starts it, with, um, what made it assume, interesting as well. let's imagine. He kind of, he, sorry, he assumed, guys. again, he presupposed, he said he's watched the show, so he supposed he was going to be berated and abused, right? So what happened, um, we questioned his logic, his reason. And uh, I think I think it dawned on him. You know, I, I think that's why he said he didn't want to go down these paths he was expecting, um, you know, because he said, oh, well, I can uh, prove R or I can prove curvature scientifically and then, um, but I won't be allowed to, so to speak. And then a couple of us said, well, we want to hear it. And then he was surprised. He was bamboozled. He thought, well, well, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to be asked to be shown, you know, uh, scientifically. Uh, so he's like he came at the wrong kind of time or the right time or whatever, you know. So when we went through the process of, uh, you know, asking him, well, how do you figure that out? How do you know that? Uh, he started to realize, especially when, uh, you know, when John brought up the cause because he was bringing up science and didn't even realize it. So I think it dawned on him uh, pretty quickly uh, throughout that. So I, I think that's well, uh, a, a job well done, I think. Um, I don't think he went away thinking, oh, you know, those flat earthers, um, are crazy. I think he's going to really have to reevaluate how he addresses the flat Earth argument. Well, that's only if he has any intellectual honesty. But once you realize it's not, once you realize that it's stationary, you're most of the way there because then you have to completely reassess the whole concept, right? Like See, but this... stationary. Well, then we're not. It's it's not us that's doing the spinning part, right? So. Yeah, but... But Just, you're right, Nami, but that requires a lot more insight into the fine works of physics. And it's like a harder level for most people to get. So they can just say in their mind, yeah, but it's relative. You know, we're moving with it so we don't feel it. That's like the yeah. man's explanation. It's, yeah, but then you can just look up on Wikipedia. But you can look up on Wikipedia rotating reference frame and it will tell you it's not inertial. So that whole argument holds no water whatsoever it's actually he wouldn't even understand when he read that probably so yeah, yeah. That's what i'm saying it requires a, a further insight into the how physics actually works Plus, but nobody's right. right nobody's correct nobody's correct that's a good argument and you are also correct darwin they don't understand it 
Oh, right. Yeah. But that's a that's a point that could be argued, right? And that it's not sure. it's not incredibly difficult to understand the difference between an inertial frame and a non-inertial frame. Like sure. I think most adults, if they stop and pause for a second, you can grasp it, right? Through well, uh, analogy, well, through example, things like that, right? Oh, you're giving back to different I mean, not, and that's where your mistake is. <laughs> yeah. Just go go to the average school and see how and many students the percentage of it will take physics it's not not a lot right but you could but wikipedia which these wikipedians i mean wikipedia does. <laughs> yeah but that doesn't mean that they will understand what it says i know but i'm just saying like that's what their own authorities are going to tell them that you can't regard the globe as a as an inertial frame and all these globers always make this argument that you can just regard the ground as an inertial frame and you yep. can't by anyone's logic, by their logic, by our logic, by simple, normal uh, understanding. I, I think, yeah, and I agree with that. And I think what it is is that regardless of what the terminology is, whether regular people would understand it or not, I think as humans, <laughs> we all know that we're not spinning, we're not moving. It's just the indoctrination that we've been given that will convince people, oh yeah, of course we're spinning. Of course we're rotating on an axis when everybody knows you walk outside you're not spinning <laughs> you're not moving like it's it's common sense yeah but know? everyone everyone knows that but that and back to nummy's point he's correct everything he said was correct these wikipedians they they can't understand it or they won't understand it it's willful ignorance and then right after you expose them because it's easy to expose them like we just did today Right after that, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get the typical, you know, customary yield diversion while ships disappear for a whole burst, right? And then you're down that line. It goes, it's ridiculous. Yeah, they don't realize that you only, you only have to break one thing about their theory, their model, and then their model's broken now, right? Like that the model has to fit all the evidence to even be plausible. But their model is implausible on the basis that there's no evidence of that the evidence that must be present to ac accept this idea of a rotating Earth is absent. Yeah, it's a Frankenstein model. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, I'm sure you know what to do already. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day.